Joshua Weissman shared an oven barbecue rib recipe a while back that I think could use some serious help. Ah! So with a few tweaks, I'll try to take his recipe to the next level. But first, let's see how he made them. Okay, so to get things started, we need to make our rib rub. Start off with two tablespoons of kosher salt, brown sugar, smoked paprika, garlic powder, ground coffee. Give it some whiskey business until everything's thoroughly combined. And would you look at that? That's a gosh darn rib rub. Pretty standard pork barbecue rub here. I love that he added sugar to his rub because the sweetness just pairs so perfectly with pork. I also really like that he added coffee to his rub because he's cooking his ribs in the oven and he's not going to get smoke flavor in there. So the coffee can kind of add that bold, deep, rich flavor that can help substitute for that, which is very cool. Now, before you get to rubbing your ribs, you're gonna wanna make sure that you remove this layer of tissue that runs along the top of the rib. Whenever I'm cooking ribs in an offset smoker, I usually just leave the membrane on because the way that it cooks, normally the membrane kind of gets dried up and flakes off or something. I honestly don't know what happens to it, but once I'm done cooking, I don't notice the membrane at all. But since Josh is using a kitchen oven to cook his ribs, I think removing the membrane is a great idea. And I haven't made enough ribs in the oven to make a really strong argument for this, but I'll just say it's better to be safe than sorry. And a pro tip that I learned from Malcolm Reed from How to Barbecue Right is to use a butter knife to get under the membrane and then use a paper towel to pull it off that way, it doesn't slip from your fingers. Season each rack of ribs very generously with your rib rub, and well, obviously, you're gonna rub it all over because it's a rib rub and you should be rubbing your ribs. So some of you probably know exactly what I'm about to say, which is, just like Harry Sue always says, never rub your rub. Pat it instead. If you rub your ribs, the moisture from the ribs are gonna mix together with the seasoning, creating this paste that leaves the ribs with a very undesirable texture once they're done. However, it really doesn't matter whether you pat or rub your ribs for this specific recipe because of the way that Josh cooks these ribs, but we'll get to that very soon. Place each individual rack in an envelope of foil. Give a little splash of a vinegar of your choice. Actually use this yuzu rice vinegar. So adding vinegar is gonna speed up the tenderizing process while he's cooking these ribs. From my understanding, the acid in the vinegar helps to break down the collagen that's in the ribs, which if the collagen isn't fully broken down, it ends up being very chewy and unpleasant to eat. And because of that, vinegar in the wrap is a great idea. Seal it nice and tight and place it in an oven set to 300 degrees Fahrenheit for two and a half to three hours or until extremely tender. And by tender, I mean you should be able to pull the rib bones out real easy. So normally when you smoke ribs, you start the cook with the ribs unwrapped. That way you can develop a nice dark crust on the outside of the ribs. And then afterwards, you wrap them in foil and let them get tender to finish the cook. But Josh is starting his rib cook with the ribs wrapped, which seems to be kind of common for these oven barbecue rib recipes, but he's cooking them to the point where the bones can slide out. Now this will totally work because you can just blast the ribs on high for a few minutes to build that crust with the broil setting in the oven. But in my opinion, this makes things much more difficult because the margin of error just gets very small in comparison to cooking them in a low and slow traditional style. And as a result, you can easily burn your ribs doing this. But again, it could definitely work. Well, that's cooking, let's make our barbie sauce. 285 grams of ketchup, brown sugar, kosher salt, white vinegar, yuzu rice vinegar, or or apple cider vinegar, water, garlic powder, smoked paprika. Almost every barbecue sauce that I've tried or have made myself uses ketchup as the base for the sauce. It just has that perfect balance of tomato flavor and saltiness that gives the barbecue sauce that authentic taste. It's similar to Uncle Roger when he sees people using MSG in their recipes. Nephew Joshua is using ketchup in his barbecue sauce. That's good. All right, I'm half Asian. Okay, so don't try to cancel me, you scammers. <laughs> then just mix that together, place it over medium heat, and simmer that sauce for 30 minutes or until nice and reduced and thicky like this. Whenever you add barbecue sauce to ribs, normally you put it on while it's cooking. So the sauce reduces and it becomes cohesive with the rib versus just sliding off. Because of this, I would not cook the sauce and try and get the sauce super thicky because if you reduce the sauce too much, while it's cooking on the rib, it can get this weird plasticky texture. This is a tasty barbecue sauce. It's gonna work just fine as it is, but why not take it just an extra step further by also cold smoking it? He's never changed. Even this old school Josh was still super extra, man. <laughs> if you wanna add smoke flavor to your barbecue sauce, 
Do not buy an entire machine to do this. Just add a few drops of liquid smoke concentrate instead. I promise with all of the ingredients that ketchup has and all of the other ingredients you're adding onto the sauce, you're not gonna taste the difference. Okay, so once your ribs are done, take them out of the oven, open them up. I personally like to grill mine and glaze them, but before you do that, you really wanna let this cool down a little bit because they will fall apart on the grill. I actually like to chill mine overnight. Okay, there was so many things wrong with that small clip. First of all, if you can't take your ribs out of the oven and successfully transfer them from one location to the other without them falling apart, then you absolutely overcooked them. Okay, here's a tip. Cook your ribs for less time, that way you don't overcook them. And then you can finish cooking your ribs completely in just a few hours instead of over the span of two days. Second thing, what is the purpose of cooking the ribs on a propane grill outside? Am I missing something? Just cook them in the oven. It's the exact same thing. In fact, this is kind of worse because a gas grill doesn't have a broil feature like an oven. So you'd have to put the ribs face down on the grill grates towards the heat to get a good crust, which will make an absolute mess of the rub and the sauce. Not to mention having to buy a propane grill in the first place. Just use your oven. Then that's pretty much it once they're nice and lacquered, hot, and they got a little bit of crispy going on, then I would say that's time to eat. Okay, so it's Wibby. <laughs> I mean, look. <laughs> ah! If you don't have a smoker, but you want to have solid ribs, this is the only way that you should be going. Of all the terms he could have possibly used to describe his pile of rib bones and shredded rib meat, solid is the very last word I would think of. <laughs> but with that said, overall, Josh's recipe is fine. Especially if you like fall off the bone ribs, you might prefer his recipe. Except for the whole propane grill thing. Don't do that. But let me show you how I would fix it. So I have two near identical racks of St. Louis cut ribs from Porter Road. For the first rack of ribs, I will do the exact same thing Josh did in his video. So removing the membrane, rubbing the rub, vinegar in the foil, overcooking them, and refrigerating them overnight. And yes, I even went out on the coldest day of the year to propane grill these ribs with barbecue sauce. For the second rack, I did almost the same thing, except I didn't rub the rub. I pulled the foil ribs early to prevent them from overcooking. Then I unwrapped the ribs and put them back in the oven on the broil setting for a few minutes to get a crust on the ribs. Then I turned off the oven, put on some thinned out barbecue sauce that I did not reduce and put them back in the oven while it was still hot. So again, the recipe for both of these racks of ribs is near identical, just in my opinion, I think mine came out a little bit prettier. But for my tweaked recipe, I cooked these ribs in the oven for probably half the time that I cooked the other ribs. And in my opinion, they're still overcooked. So if I had to do this recipe again, I probably would just skip the apple cider vinegar in the wrap because it gets plenty tender just packed in that foil packet. So I think chances are both of these racks of ribs are going to taste pretty much exactly the same because they're made with the same ingredients. But I'll still do a taste test. My rack. Mm. Josh's rack. There's something so nostalgic about these ribs. They remind me of like ribs that I had as a kid. So with ribs, as long as you cook them long enough to break down the collagen, it's really hard to go wrong with them. In fact, I think these would make a great sandwich. Can't forget the pickled onions. As tasty as these ribs are, I think Ethan Schlebowski's oven rib recipe is way better. So watch the next video on your screen so you can see my full thoughts on Ethan's recipe, and I'll see you guys over there.